Not let us end with Her Majesty's proceeding back to Buckingham Palace with the happiest memories of South London's outspoken loyalty. When it was all over, King George would thank his people in a voice that choked with emotion. Words cannot express my thoughts and feelings. I can only say to you, my very dear people, that the Queen and I thank you from the depths of our heart for all the loyalty and, may I say, the love with which this day and always you have surrounded us. The party mood flowed on to the end of the year. But then, early in 1936, the gaiety would come to a sudden end. This is London. The following bulletin was issued at 9.25. The King's life is moving peacefully towards its close. The King's generous heart had finally stopped. George had died at Sandringham, the home he loved above all others. On the day of his burial, his coffin was followed by his sons, Edward, now king of course, and the princes, Bertie, George and Henry. George's body was brought to London so the nation could honour the man who'd been a good king. Mary's heart would be broken for a second time when her son Edward abandoned the throne after just ten months. but she would be happy to see her second son, Bertie, crown George VI and grow into a king his father George would have been proud of. She would go on to teach her granddaughters how to behave in the royal manner, and she would live to see her great-grandson, Charles, become next in line in the Royal House of Windsor, the house that George and Mary had founded back in 1916. Who would have guessed then that this unremarkable couple would go on to save the British monarchy?